everyone and welcome back to another video. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, today I want to go over um, neuromuscular facilitation. Uh, sounds very big, sounds very scary, sounds very complicated. Um, it's really not. It's just basically our link between our brain and our muscles. Okay, so the link between our brain and our muscles are our nervous system and sometimes for different reasons it can get disturbed, okay, or we can get just a little bit less effective. And why does that have an effect on your workout? Well, if we can't activate the muscle to its full potential, then we can't shape, tone, strengthen, or build on it. So it's something that absolutely everybody should be looking at. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, whether you're looking to lose weight or gain weight, or whether you're just looking to regain, um, whether you're just looking to regain some movement um, or, or quality of um, muscular control. So how, how can we improve that? It's something as simple as just concentrating um, just really concentrating on feeling that muscle squeeze um, and really feel that muscle contract. Uh, again, because when we're looking at this um, facilitation, so the uh, neurology and, and the muscular system working um, together, um, we need to really make sure that they are working as accurately as possible. Um, mainly so we don't have what we call uh, muscular imbalances. Now there's many reasons for muscular imbalances, but one of them could well be um, that we have not got the right neuromuscular activation. And what that can mean is big muscles end up doing small muscles jobs. So a small muscle, for example, is um, a stabilizer, um, one that's there um, designed to stabilize a joint. Um, and if it's not firing correctly, um, the more time it goes on, the less likely it is to fire and the weaker and weaker it will become. The more dominant muscle will then become more and more and more dominant. Doesn't sound like too much of a problem, potentially it might not be, but what can happen is the joint can then become unstable because you've got um, an instability within um, the muscles there. So that big muscle will take over the whole job, the movement, um, flexion, extension, which whichever movement it's going to do. Um, and it'll also take over the stabilization as well, which can um, put the joint in a slightly different um, angle and can cause um, wear and tear um, adversely to the joint. So I, I understand that this you know, might not well be um, of a concern to lots of people, but the one thing we should all be concerned about is that activation and to make sure that we're activating the muscle correctly, correctly and effectively because it can have a massive impact in your workout. How about if you worked for the same amount and just doing a few exercises before you worked out could actually make your workout massively more effective. A couple of minutes, three, four minutes before every workout and you could really, really have a profound effect. Not a bad trade-off really, is it? So just to have a think about that, what I've got in the upcoming part of this video, okay, is a few exercises to look at our core engagement. As the one that I see lots of, because people come to me saying they've got a bit of a bad back, they've got a bit of a sore back, or they're trying to do a core workout, and all they can feel it in is in their back. This is a prime example of poor muscular activation, down to the um, poor um, neurology. Okay, so all we need to do is we just need to correct that. It's not a massive thing that, that takes huge amounts of time, as he said, a few minutes before each workout or have you really started to notice a difference very, very quickly, okay? And I'm talking in sessions, hours, I'm not talking in weeks or months. So again, it's really important and it will help increase that shape, the tone, if that's your goal, okay? Guys, if you're looking to get bigger, it will help aid your muscular size and increase, okay? And it really will help everybody involved. So prime example here is um, hamstrings dominating glutes due to poor muscular activation. Over time, your hamstrings get more and more and more dominant. Glutes get less and less and less so. Lots of pressure into your lower spine. Okay, can cause knock-on effects with um, your abdominals as well. Um, again, these won't engage correctly. So your poor lower back now is now taking all the strain. It's taking the strain of your glutes, it's taking the strain of um, your, um, the front of your core as well you know, it's really under a lot of pressure. And then we start to wonder why it starts to hurt a little bit when we're trying to work out. That's why it's over firing. So in these next exercises, I'm going to show you how, how to recorrect that and how to reestablish um, a pathway that's potentially lost. So for example, first exercise we'll be looking at will be a good one of just literally just placing fingers over the core and just feel the muscles tighten. This one is absolutely key for people that have just had a C-section. Okay, it's really important. This is one of the first exercises because one of the first things that we tend to do when we come out 
um, from having anything, even if it's um, an abdominal tear, um, is we try to do sit-ups, we try to do crunches, or we try to do very big movements. Again, this is going to get the big muscles doing big jobs, and the little muscles won't do their jobs that they need to do, and they're just as important. Not only that, all of your nerves won't be firing correctly, so you're only going to activate a portion of your muscle, which means you're only going to get a portion of the results. So think of it that way. Okay, so a few moves coming up. Have a quick look at these, and it's really, really going to help aid your workout. I can't emphasize these enough. Thanks very much. If you get any questions, obviously feel free to post them below or send me a message on my Facebook page. And have a quick look at my website, lukecollinsfitness.com. Thanks very much. So when we're looking at the activation, what we need to do is we need to create some tension in the core, and physical feedback is a good way to be able to feel that. So what you can do is just bring your knees up slightly, as you can see in the video. Place your hands underneath the lower part of your spine. I need you to draw your belly button towards the back of your spine, okay, and then start to feel some tension in your hands. Okay, if you can't start to feel that tension, really concentrate. Another good way of explaining this tension is just imagine someone's about to hit you really, really hard in the stomach, okay, and you get that sudden real contraction. That's always a good way. Okay, so as we explained into the video, we're going to have um, a look at our glute activation. So how this one works is we go into all fours. Wrists directly under shoulders, knees directly underneath hips. You're going to bring one heel up, okay, in line with the back, uh, in line with your hips. On this one, you need to be able to feel the contraction only in your glute, so only in your bum. If you feel this in your hamstring, reset to the beginning without completing the movement and restart again. So really clench your bum really tight when both knees are on the floor. Okay, and extend, continually tensing as you go. And what you'll find is as your leg extends up to the rear, as your glutes will get tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay, you want to be completing this for around about sort of 12 to 15 repetitions on each leg. This is a movement that you can do almost daily. Um, and again, it will really aid that uh, muscular pathway. So moving on. We're now going to challenge our stability. So what we're going to do now is opposite arm and opposite leg. So your heel will still be coming up in line with your hips and your wrist will be coming up in line with your shoulders. And what you want to make sure is you try not to wobble and move around too much. So how you can do this is by squeezing your bum as tight as you can and by drawing your belly button into your lower spine as we did in the earlier movement. When you get to the top, pause for a couple of seconds and really feel those muscles tighten together to create a nice rigid middle section or core okay to create that stabilization and to make sure that your spine is nice and protected and that all of your muscles are activating as they should do again complete this 12 to 15 times on each side we're now going to have a look at our glutes this is a movement that i see quite a lot lots of people like to add weight that's brilliant to add on into later stages, but only if your glutes are activating correctly. So heels are close to your bum, hip width apart. You need to squeeze your bum as tight as you can and pick your hips up in line. So there's a straight line between your knees, your hips and your shoulders. When you feel as if you're high enough, you can really give an extra squeeze and you can feel your hips just rise an extra inch. Okay, that's absolutely fine and that's what we're looking to achieve. Again, it's a slow movement as you come down. Don't let your bum touch the floor so we can keep muscular tension so we can really drive home that benefit. Thank you.